So, as some of you might have heard, Kubo Sensei has given us some pretty important information regarding Ichigo's dual Zanpakuto. But before I proceed, I do have numerous videos on Ichigo covering his speed, power, abilities, his character, Zanpakuto, his battles and so on coming in the future. But this video contains some super important information regarding Ichigo's swords which the author has revealed to us. It answers the question, does Ichigo still have his two Zanpakuto after his battle with Yuha? Now as for that information, here goes. The dual Zangetsu is made of the blade and the scabbard, in other words the blade and the sheath. So seemingly the small blade will be the sword and the large blade will be the scabbard with a space within it. He then goes on to explain that the choric form of the Zanpakuto includes a scabbard. In other words, a scabbard or a sheath plus a sword is equal to a Zanpakuto. Apparently, this must also be the reason why Oetsu Nimaya describes Sayafushi as lacking a sheath and as such does not fit the proper description of a Zanpakuto. And while I'm on the subject of Sayafushi, he goes on to note that the only two Zanpaktos which lack a sheath are Zangetsu and Sayafushi. And since the true form or the correct form of a Zanpakuto is the scabbard or sheath and the sword, he goes on to explain that Zangetsu's correct form is when Ichigo is using dual wielding. In other words, when he has both swords in his hand, that is a correct form. Which of course would mean that Sayafushi does not have a correct form. Furthermore, Ichigo's Bankai provides a sheath. And this makes sense since when Ichigo was about to release Bankai against Yuha, he essentially puts the smaller sword against the larger one, as if to fit the smaller sword into the space within the larger one. He essentially matches up the sword against the scabbard. And when he takes on Bankai form, the sword is essentially sheathed. This is magnificent. And this would imply that he's channeling the power of both swords simultaneously, a power so magnificent that Yuha broke the sword out of respect. Furthermore, this also means that the portion of the sword that was shattered by Yuha later in their battle was simply the scabbard, which according to Kubo, Ichigo reabsorbed into himself. So the shattered scabbard went back into Ichigo's soul. And Ichigo now possesses the ability to manifest that scabbard once more. In other words, if he wants to, he can split his sword back into two. But according to Kubo, this is up to Ichigo. Interestingly enough, after the scabbard was shattered, Yuha, upon seeing the revealed sword, referred to it as Zangetsu, which Kubo also confirmed is in fact the true Zangetsu. So that is Ichigo's true power. And this means that Ichigo, as he was featured in the Hell One-Shot, has the ability to manifest the scabbard if he wishes. Which means that he can manifest the correct form of the Zanpakuto with the sword and the scabbard, as well as possess the true form of Zangetsu. So this is really good news. But let's talk about Zangetsu for a bit, just to provide some context for those who don't know. So the Asauchi is the true form of the Zanpakuto, or the base sword, created by Oitsu Nimaya. This is then given to the Soul Reapers. When they train with the Asauchi, they imprint their souls upon it, and they're able to unleash their powers as Shikai and Bankai. Now because Ichigo did not possess a true Asauchi at first, he was unable to manifest his true Zanpakuto power in Royal Palace. But after speaking to his father and learning about his past, the true origins of his powers, when Ichigo returned to Royal Palace, he was accepted by the Asauchi. The Asauchi that he held onto essentially took on the shape of white, or the hollow inside him. And this is significant as later Oetsu Nimaya explained to Ichigo that the hollow inside him, which is a combination of his hollow powers and the Shinigami powers, is a manifestation of his true Zanpakuto spirit. And he goes on to explain that the method that Aizen used to create white is very similar to the method he uses to create Zanpakuto spirits in Royal Palace, which again kind of explains why the hollow can serve as a Zanpakuto spirit. But if white is Ichigo's true Zanpakuto spirit, then the old man which represents Ichigo's Quincy powers must be an imposter. And upon confronting the old man, Ichigo learned that he is essentially an aspect of Yuha, or essentially the representation of Yuha's power inside Ichigo, that is the Quincy power that Ichigo inherited from his mother. But knowing the old man's true intentions, Ichigo accepted both the old man and white as Zangetsus, essentially calling them both Zangetsu. And upon retrieving the blade and scabbard, both spirits manifested behind Ichigo to confirm this. Additionally, Oetsu Nemai referred to them as Zangetsus, which further confirmed that both the old man Quincy and white fall under the title of Zangetsu. And if we skip roughly 12 years into the future, where the hell one shot takes place, we can see Ichigo wielding Zangetsu. He used it to cut down one of the ghouls from hell as well as casually sever the chains of hell. 
You might also realize that the shape of the Zanpakuto depicted in the Hell one-shot is the same as the shape he possessed early on in Bleach when he fought against Urahara in training. And this shape was manifested when Ichigo learned Resolve. Resolve being a huge turning point for Ichigo as his powers depend upon his determination. When Ichigo was fighting against Zangetsu in order to learn Bankai, we learned that the sword is a manifestation of Ichigo's will to fight. And you can see the symbolism in using that blade to cut down Yuha. And before their first battle when Yuha saw the future like a dream, it's the very same sword that Ichigo was wearing in that dream. Or perhaps I should say in that timeline. So roughly 12 years into the future, Ichigo can now manifest the scabbard at will, which implies that Ichigo now possesses a tremendous amount of control over his Zanpakuto power. Furthermore, in the Khan for Your Own World novel, the reason why Shunsui did not bring Ichigo to Aizen's ceiling in Muken is because he was afraid that Aizen could potentially manipulate the hollow inside Ichigo with his words. This provides further support that Ichigo still possesses his Zanpakuto spirits, and their powers. Furthermore, Tokinada Sunayashiro also stated that alongside Ginjo Kugo and Hikone Ubugino, Ichigo is qualified to become Soul King because of his mixed nature, referring of course to his Soul Reaper, his Hollow and Quincy powers. So again, it is supported that Ichigo still has his Zanpakuto spirits and their powers. Now I hope this video along with Kubo's answer helps to give you a better perspective as to where Ichigo is currently at. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to like and subscribe Hit the notification, I'll be releasing multiple videos quite soon, and cheers.